shopping malls may just seem like clusters of stores, but they're actually very delicate profit-making formulas. The ideal place to settle a mall is a central, wealthy location with lots of traffic, close enough to attract locals, easily driven to from nearby towns, and for maximum profit, tourist accessible. With everything planned just right, a mall is far more fruitful than its individual stores could ever be. But even then, the tides seem to be turning. How can even the perfect mall beat the price and convenience of Amazon? And the data seems to confirm. Online shopping is on the rise, while more and more malls are withering away. But graphs like this are misleading. The mall is far from dying, and Amazon only confirms this. Before we get there, we first need to understand what makes a mall unique. Because malls are owned and managed by a single company, their incentives are very different from an individual store. A group of small local stores is normally the perfect opportunity for a big corporation to come in and steal their business. But to the owner of a mall, too much competition means fewer stores and less rent being made. So they carefully pick renters that not only cooperate but actually complement one another. This is why malls tend to have a similar set of stores, whether you're in Washington or Wyoming. Well, if there are malls in Wyoming. Each class of mall, from the five-star to the less-than-glamorous, has a standard metadeck of stores that have been proven to generate more profit together, regardless of where it's located. But the real heart of the mall are the anchor stores, big department stores that draw in the crowds for everyone else. You'd never drive to a store specifically for remote-controlled helicopters or seasonal mustache warmers, but if one anchor store can lure you into the mall, these other shops get your business too. And they're positioned on opposite ends of the building, making you walk past everything else to get between them. The goal of a drive through is to get you in and out as quickly as possible, but malls are just the opposite, doing anything and everything to prolong your stay. They want to satisfy your needs so well that it's always just easier to stay a little bit longer. So for every need on Maslow's hierarchy, there's a convenient solution not 10 steps away. The food court fills you up, brave deputies stand guard, friends keep you company, and your purchases are psychologically rewarded. Companies even seem to think they're providing some sort of profound civic duty. We actually don't call them stores anymore. We call them town squares. But there's an obvious problem with this strategy. More and more people can't or don't want to spend a lot of time shopping. It may take some time, but the trend seems clear. Physical retail stores are dying, and the internet will be the new way to shop. There's one big problem with this theory. Amazon just bought the grocery store Whole Foods for $14 billion. If physical retail stores are soon to be a thing of the past, why are companies like Amazon and Alibaba investing in them? Part of these deals is about getting data for the algorithms, but nowhere near $14 billion worth. But if you take a closer look at which stores are closing, you may notice a theme. These are businesses that never adapted. They crossed their fingers that this internet thing would be a fad, and kept selling the exact products Amazon is great for. Unless I need an HDMI cable this very instant, I'm just going to buy one online and probably even save some money. But the average shopper at Whole Foods has $1,000 of discretionary income to spend a month. They want to pay for a premium experience. Likewise, everything in an Apple store could be sold online, but they continue building newer, shinier stores at great expense. Amazon sees this pattern too. Walk-in stores aren't dying, old outdated ones are. So what does this mean for malls? The bad news is that many of these dying businesses are actually anchor stores for average middle-class malls. Without a Macy's or JCPenney paying rent and attracting visitors, many are in serious trouble. But higher-end malls are doing better than ever. The more expensive the store, the more customers care about the experience, and the harder it is for the internet to replace. As long as the upper class keeps growing, upscale malls will only do better and better. So yes, there are malls that are dying, but malls as a thing aren't dying at all, and neither is retail. The best way to predict the future is to look at where big, smart companies are putting their money. And companies like Amazon and Apple are clearly betting on walk-in retail being around for a long time, so you should too. You can shop this holiday season knowing the mall Santa will be back next year. And with luck, we may even be blessed with Paul Blart 3.
This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is a website and mobile app with full, high-quality video courses on all sorts of topics, both fun and professional. Let me actually recommend two course topics. First, the Adobe apps. I've wanted to learn After Effects for some time, but the interface is just so needlessly complicated. It's the same with Photoshop, Illustrator, and all the others. Everything about these programs seems designed to confuse you, so it's really ideal to have someone explain them for you. When I've gotten errors or had something weird happen with an application I'm learning, I've asked a Skillshare instructor and quickly gotten it answered. Another cool course I found is on calligraphy. My penmanship is terrible, and it's also just a fun skill to learn. It took me about 30 seconds to find a good course for beginners, and you can take them at whatever pace works for you. The first 300 people to use this link will get two months to see if you like it for free. It really helps support this channel, and if none of the 17,000 classes interest you, you can leave at any time without paying a cent. Thanks again to Skillshare.